Thank you very much. Yes, battery minerals in Finland, and I believe I can change slides here. Yeah, um, this presentation has been done in cooperation with the fantastic team members from, from our unit, uh, Bu Longpakka and Pasi Eilu, who are the specialists in, in different fields of uh, what comes to mineral, mineral potential, even mineral exploration background. And uh, I feel privileged to work with them. I feel privileged to be today here telling about the battery minerals, which is a very hot topic today, as we've already heard. And what actually we mean by battery minerals, um, as you've today heard from, from Simon, the batteries need variety of, of metals and, uh, of course, variety of minerals. Uh, in, in the focus are often cobalt, nickel, uh, graphi graphite and uh, lithium, as you can see, but uh, we should not forget that the copper also plays a significant role in this electrification uh, and this new era where we are standing now. Uh, Simon already showed this ima image for you. Uh, just once again to underline that the typical electric car uh, requires six times more mineral inputs compared to conventional car. And uh, when we are um, in, this, in this new era, so we of course need, like heard from Simon, new forms of energy. Uh, and an onshore wind plant requires nine times more mineral resources than gas-fired power plant. Just once again, underlying the need of metals in future. The source of this is the International Energy Agency, as you've heard. So it's self-evident we are in uh, front of big challenge. Uh, the, this also shows that, of course, other industries than the energy business needs metals, not only the energy business. Uh, however, if you have a look at this, in the case of uh, lithium, for example, this STEPS scenario, that refers to stated policy scenarios, what is currently stated already. And this SDS is the sustainable development scenario, if we are going to meet the Paris Agreement demands. So it's it, the share of the uh, uh, metals will be very significant in terms of a, a compared to other sector needs. So, uh, again, the, uh, here we can see that the 2040, uh, we most probably need 40 times more lithium, 25 times graphite and so forth. But uh, we need an ele electric network as well and power lines, which certainly needs copper as well, if we're going to have such a many batteries around electric vehicles, uh, other, other places producing energy. So it's estimated that the need for copper will, will double uh, over the, that time of a period. What Finland has done, uh, there was a um, uh, a bit less than two years ago, uh, the, the Minister of Trade and Industry, Mika Lintilä, uh, said, a, said a group of, of specialists and said, uh, to work with the national battery strategy uh, with the aim to strengthen the, the whole battery sector, also to meet the low carbon targets set for the society and uh, also to contribute in EU level uh, targets, what, what is said, and also to, to, to meet the requirements for the society it needs in future. These are the strategic object, objectives, what was, what was uh, 
coming out from that group. Uh, so Finnish battery sector needs to be growing and renewing itself. Uh, it doesn't happen without investments. Uh, so the investment need to be more diversified. And uh, Finnish battery sector overall wants to be globally well-known brand. As you know what is happening in, in China, uh, they, the electric vehicle generation in there, uh, the, the amount of electric vehicles, what, what they are producing currently, the transition, what is happening there, this is a very ambitious goal to meet. Uh, how Finland can be really a well-known brand in this field. However, it's, we need to have an ambitious goal. We need to go there. So that's, the, that's, that's stated in the, in the strategy. What about then uh, the, the collaboration? Members of Finnish battery sector need to work together. Even though we are not a big country, uh, especially in a global scale. So there still needs to be more cooperation between the different organizations, like research organizations like we are, Geological Survey, uh, but also with the universities. It easily can happen that they, we don't know what each other are doing. So certainly collaboration within a country is needed. And on the right-hand side, you can see the the enablers and market changes identified in that, in that strategy. Responsibility, of course, to have a social license to operate in every step of the battery value chain. Then we need a new business models. And of course, digitalization where Estonia is a forerunner. So that's, the, that's, that's something that we certainly need to do. Proposed measures in that strategy. This is the final slide, what I'm going to talk about this strategy. Uh, the, we need to enhance the national cooperation, like I already mentioned, but the scaling up the skills. Uh, we, in Finland, we have identified, and we already can see that when we are recruiting people in geological survey, that the, in some positions we are facing, the, uh, facing hard to find the skills what we are recruiting. So we, we don't always have, when we open the vacancy, we don't always have uh, the appropriate people on the market. They are working elsewhere, they've, they've somewhere else. Or then uh, the, the overall thing that we are develop the world is changing so quickly that the universities can, cannot follow necessarily what we what we are needing. So we certainly need to work that together. And expanding EU and international cooperation, this is, this is the way. I mean that uh, in the EU we, we do play, uh, that we certainly should play even more uh, together in this field. Uh, making Finland a forerunner in sustainable and responsible, responsible battery production, uh, SLO questions, as I already mentioned, and then making Finland and Finnish battery and electrification cluster as a brand. We all have the responsibility of telling about the story, how important is this, the whole value chain. Uh, as a scientist, like I used to be once upon a time, I remember that the, what, I, what was the most of, scaring situation it, it was that going for an interview and uh, telling about something that you wasn't 100% sure. As a scientist you always want to be 100% sure. However, this is needed. We, we certainly should go there and even though we are not 100% sure in the front of the TV cameras or something, uh, I think it's the only way that we should spread the message we are the only one who can do, actually, in, in terms of what comes to minerals. Before going to Finnish battery sector, I just want to show the, uh, in one sh uh, slide, set the uh, strategy of a GTK that was actually done before the release of this battery strategy. So already in there, battery minerals 
was identified one of those four focus areas. Information solutions, uh, like Pekka today already told about, and Hanna will tell about later together today, uh, they are one of the key, key assets for us and one of the focus areas. Circular economy, we need to make the loop and the, utilize the raw materials as well as possible. And then, of course, the water issues that are <laughs> important for every one of us. What comes to operating mines in Finland? Uh, the Pekka mentioned today already the Sotkamo Terrafame Talvivara mine that was actually found, discovered in uh, 1977 uh, as a result of her GTK field work. And uh, it took some time when, when this mine is un uh, in operation, there has been a lots of lots of happenings after that, and even, even one, one film has been made. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a film partially fictional, partially based on a true story, so, so it's uh, exciting. I think it, the only film made about any mine in Finland, or, or the history of a mine. Uh, that can happen also. Anyway, uh, it's, the, it's the largest in terms of a production currently in Finland, and the key wh why it came into a, a operation, it was the heap leaching. Uh, processing at that time when it was found wasn't, uh, the processing technologies wasn't econ economical, so the heap leaching was then developed for later on. Uh, so it's, it produces, uh, now battery chemicals and um, and the nickel zinc copper and copper are the, the the metals what we can f get from there as well copper nickel copper uh, copper and platinum platinum group elements are coming out from this Kevitsa Buliden mine up in the north so this to my knowledge is the only mine in, in Europe that uh, produces platinum crop elements, and uh, also the it's uh, Finland based on these two mines. I think it's the largest uh, or or the second largest produ producer of a nickel and copper, but the copper production uh, from Finland is, I think, in the EU we we are the the only one, only country producing that. Not only uh, the operating mines are important, but the mines perhaps to be opened in the future. We, in Finland, Western Finland, there is a lithium province. Uh, for geologists, it's the lithium pegmatites there, uh, and the, it's the uh, lithium is in spodumen mineral, which is a lithium pyroxene. So there has been a known region, and TTK also has contributed uh, in the research of this area, building up the big picture there, what the bedrock is. Uh, GTK has contributed in uranium lead dating of, of the, the mineral deposits and also scientifically contributing there. Uh, the, that, uh, based on the, what, what the company is saying, so they are expecting to start 2024. Sakatti, copper, nickel, cobalt, and platinum group elements, as well as gold, it's the significant, uh, mm, significant project up in the north as well. The ma this area is the Nature 2000 area, and uh, there is uh, quite quite much discussion uh, has been that the how to how to take that uh, those um, that deposit in use whether that's possible how it would be possible what would be the methodologies uh, it's it's by Anglo American owned by Anglo American at the moment so so we. We are looking forward to see how that project develops, as well as the 
uh, Eastern Finland, there there is previous mine activity that has stopped for a while, and they are considering with the uh, now opening. So so that's the that's the landscape. There there is a lots of uh, advanced pro projects ongoing, and uh, and then also exploration projects up in the north. There is a coupled coupled gold deposits uh, by Mawson Company, also located in a Nature 2000 area. So land use issues are in a constant discussion in Finland what comes to utilizing mineral deposits. Uh, there is uh, also gold copper deposit in in the northeastern finland that is is quite advanced stage in the in in exploration what will be then the time frame the company doesn't report company is latitude 66 and also uh, there is a graphite graphite projects ongoing these are the the this is the landscape there is a lot of other activities. These are picked up by our specialists, what they consider at the moment, based on the available information, what are the most advanced stage. There is a team in, in our unit called Mineral Intelligence Team. They are constantly following what is happening in Finland, what is constantly happening globally. Uh, they And then they try to foresee, forecast what what is about to come, what, what are the next steps. And uh, it's so happy to work with, with these uh, specialists in, in our unit uh, who are kind of all the time up to date. And uh, it's a d every day you can learn new things. Uh, uh, I don't know how they do it. Uh, in, in Finland, we have the battery mineral potential as well. So GTK has utilized also the methodology based on a United States geological survey, how to identify and uh, how to quantify uh, how much there is what we don't know, undiscovered, how much in, the, in, in certain areas there are certain ore types below down deep down there it's a methodology well described uh, and uh, gtk has further developed that with the other partners in the eit raw material project to make make that as a tool uh, also for for others uh, other surveys and other I interested um, institution to be used. The reports can be found in TTK webpage where the methodology is described and uh, how to how to come in a certain area. That, and of course, the original references by United States uh, Geological Survey. Um, TTK also has um, launched its own battery mineral project. And uh, that's the project uh, that we are now running. Uh, we are in a reporting stage. Uh, and this project utilizes the existing data, what we have, but also collecting new data in a different areas. We are not doing the exploration as such. However, we are doing uh, drilling campaigns, uh, but that doesn't mean that that type of drilling, what exploration companies are drilling. We are checking certain areas that might be potential. And by drilling, we are also uh, building up the big picture, trying to fill out the gaps, what we don't know, and uh, targeting the drilling. So building the picture of a mineral potential of a certain area and of a certain metal. Uh, that's it's a different thing that the exploration companies do and um, and i'm coming close to end of my presentation trying to summarize that we think that the finland 
has a great potential of battery minerals. Uh, on the map there, you can see the different mineral deposits in Finland for different uh, metals and uh, minerals and also active mines and the mine projects and then the uh, advanced exploration project. There are lots of potential to study and not forgetting what Pekka already mentioned about the, the current infrastructure in place. So it's all about the uh, when when we are talking about the infrastructure and trying to find the minerals for the tomorrow, uh, I think in my personal opinion, it's all about the people and then it's all about the knowledge and it's all about the what how we do that together. Uh, the cross-disciplinary thinking, uh, it's I think that's the key for the future. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Asko. <clears throat> Do we have any questions? Uh, just in between, I, I'll remind the 53, 54, somebody keeps jumping on and off of, of the participants that are coming in by internet, that you can still continue to ask questions on the uh, Slideio uh, site, slid.io. Uh, and it's GEO22, so you can ask those questions and I can ask those of the presenters as well. But we have a question here in the, in the hall. Yeah, uh, thank you, very interesting. So my question is that uh, uh, regarding this carbon, for example, the graphite, uh, you have a lot of peat in Finland and uh, have you investigated how to create or produce uh, graphite or special form of carbon from peat, for example? <laughs> interesting. I. Personally, at least, I, I don't know any, any projects related to that. I, I'm not aware. Of course, we have been historically using peat as a source of energy and uh, that, but uh, not to produce, trying to produce any, any, any graphite out of it, I guess that would demand uh, quite much energy to, to go in that direction. Um, to my knowledge, I'm not aware of any any projects that related to that. Other questions? Let me also check my slideo. Sorry, I took the wrong piece of equipment with me. Any other questions from the hall here? So um, you can see that there is a lot of mining ongoing in Finland and perhaps now it's going to continue. Uh, it's really nice to see that there is a transition now from the energy source and the batteries that's already ongoing. Uh, and everything is related to decarbonization. Uh, we, we really want to increase that for decarbonizing systems. One, I read a couple of studies here in Finland and, and uh, not here in Finland, here mm -hmm. in <laughs> Estonia. <laughs> but that was done in Finland um, about uh, ex situ uh, CO, uh, CO2 mineralization. Do you have knowledge about that? It's like it pretty much you take like a high carbonate water and it's spread in the mining tilings, and then you can start to sequester the CO2 on that. You know, I, then my question was, you no, know, if there is anything ongoing, do you have like ultramafic rocks being mined here that could provide that tilings for that type of uh, ex situ carbon sequestration? I'm not personally aware of any any projects related to that, but it doesn't to mean that such an experimental work wouldn't exist. However, sounds fascinating. <laughs> Any other questions from here in the hall? I, I could add here. So uh, there are two big mines where the whole stroke is ultramafic, Kevitsa mm -hmm. mine and Kemi mine. Mm -hmm. So a lot of ultramafic tailings are produced mm. and mm. in my understanding somebody has thought that could this be used but I don't know any concrete projects on that but the mm. material would be available yeah. and there are still other mines but these are the big mines. All right. Thank you. I actually have a question myself. So in one of your slides you mentioned uh, rare earth elements as a critical element in the future. 
Um, what about the possibilities for rare earth uh, elements uh, coming as a as a side product mm -hmm. uh, from operating mines in Finland? Uh, from operating mines, I I don't know, but however, the I guess this afternoon there will be Pasi Heino I saw at, in the agenda. Perhaps he wants to tell about the Sokli project and the uh, real potential in in that that mine. It's not in operation. Whether there would be um, in the existing mine some potential um, could be. However, I'm not a specialist in that. But the Sokli mine... Terrifying. Yeah, Terrifying. Yeah, might be. Terrifying. Might be. <laughs> might be. Yeah. Yeah. Are you okay. aware of that more? Yes. Than, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Just waiting on okay. on you yeah. all to start yeah. extracting them for okay. me, please. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, sounds good. Interesting. Any yeah. other last question? If not, thank mm -hmm. you very much. Thank you.